from the inside. You heard mm. some people saying this openly, you know, or, you know, the, the knowledge that I can bring I would to the run. table continues to matter even at, even inside this like, context. And I, I would serve. People, I would serve eight years. You know, I would be... Who wanted to stay in power, who wanted Holy to shit, stay... Holy shit, I'd be 57, um, which you know, was a number life, Abraham used to love. You know, coming behind up with number, I think. 57. explanations. I mean, if you look I'd back be 50, on no, the history no, of... No, 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 no. You will discover that nobody, nobody collaborated with Fuck, the Nazis I would be, because they I'm going to be 50. Everybody I mean, if the election because was in 23... The left and the 50. Jews and the socialists was so enormous and so strong the is in that they had no I'd choice but to stand up and defend the honor of France and be on the Get side. In early in, I'm exaggerating uh, a little bit there to make the point, but you you find that in almost any situation where where people are sort of in a captive position, they have to either collaborate or drop out. A little bit before I'm 52, I basically go from 52 to just before I'm 60. So I'd get I out of the office that that was the story of the commander in chief executive ship of, of the disintegrated states of Central North, and told North one America as a justification for right before I turned 60, Trump, like, like, January 20th. Slogans um, that many of us heard. And, and you know, we, we see even um, now the price that points can be against paid me for the up. refuse to do that is February, now March, exclusion from 60 days, exclusion from its 70, you know, from 73 its, days. From its inner sanctum. Wow, I was born in And so people are continuing to do that. They're continuing to, you know, to, to invent a, you know, a, a, a separate but equal or, or different but equal left-wing threat that justifies their poor behavior. But this is the, this is the, this is a kind of human reaction that we've seen in. I have smoked weed most every day for more than half my life. I've done cocaine like a times. Eating mushrooms like a dozen. I've smoked a lot of cigarettes. I mean, fuck. I ate the dock when it won't go away. So, I don't think I'm the greatest candidate. Excuse me. But if nobody else stood up, right? Like, Obama was a, a, an incredibly effective rhetor rhetorician, rhetor rhetoricist, rhetorician, I think, might be. Sound right. Um, and a, a loved man, a loved citizen, uh, obviously a good father, I think, uh, a funny dude. But they scared them. Like, they scared them. The terrorism thing was still... And not a lot of, like, sort of profound facts ended up mentioned beyond the campaign. We could have... Like, it probably was impossible to get a great deal more done than Obamacare. I mean, Obama cares. No way Obama's like, oh, I want to fuck people. I mean... Does the Obama family, Obama, Michelle, uh, was it Sasha and uh, Leah? They have like $250 million now. At least $125 million. And I'm not saying like a lot of it came from books. Fine. Like you're going to tell somebody they sell a billion books at $10 each. And, and that $10 billion, they, like whatever there is beyond the cost of printing, like they have to give it back. Seem weird if you made money by writing a book or books that people bought voluntarily that shared meaningful information that it wouldn't be okay for you to keep the money from those books. Now, that leads me to something. I think that if, if, if a great political party is to appear and it's not either of the ones that exist. They will not morph into something great. I mean, yes, it's insane. Kind of insane that somehow, like, a Republican Party that back in the day was not completely deranged because they realized what kind of being could attract a chunk of their base. And if you break it down... I mean, there's good people who are Republicans, sure. These days, it's, it's a little tougher, but I'm a Republican, but I hate Trump or something. The party itself is not a great thing. It bent itself over for Donald Trump. It could have been like, 
do not like we Republicans could have said we believe that this dude, although the system is is fucked up and needs to be improved a great deal, this dude is a fucking scum. He's a scum. He's a he's a scumerican. It's not his fault that he was made terribly, but we renounce him. We renounce him, and we will ask every reasonable Republican to vote for Hitler, Hillary. And in return, what we hope, because we don't really have a choice because we can't support Donald Trump, what we hope is that, even though they, I mean, they definitely thought Hillary was going to fucking win, almost everyone thought Hillary was going to win, so this would have been difficult. Hillary would be like, What? And it, oh, sorry, I was thinking for a second there of Trump dropping out of the race. It wouldn't be Trump dropping out of the race. It would be Republicans saying, if you are a Republican, this man is so reprehensible that even if he gets us two Supreme Court justices and even if he saves millions of babies, and if there's any issue that you can never fix, it's abortion. That, that I believe that is a, it's certainly a life. It's, it's a life. Like, as soon as there's two cells, like, that is a, a, a human. May not be a human being here now completely it may not be a human being that that can even feel pain which i think is it cannot suffer it is a it is a being i think i think it is a life i think that abortion even if like i've kind of assumed that women sort of forcing a woman to have a baby's crazy like you don't want those babies ever like ended but forcing a woman to have one um, that's, that's dicey. I mean, Republicans want so little government. But what, are the, what, like, what would a real Republican even care about? I don't know. The Democratic Party is an organization in America that does not... It does not fit. This is not going to go through no matter what I do. Um, it does not annihilate the Republican Party, despite the fact that the Republican Party would bend over far as fuck and, and nominate Trump or Walker. I mean, Mitch McConnell is obviously a, a form of a metaphorical, a metaphorm of a, a metaphorical, like, white devil. I don't think he wants to hurt. I don't think he's out to hurt people. I, don't, I think most of them are probably not out to hurt people. I think the vast majority of them are not out to hurt people. I think if you told even Trump, you're like, here's the deal. You can get a fucking giant win, but nobody's going to get hurt. He'd take the giant win. Probably over a situation where you're like, you're going to get like, you're going to be the, seen as the best president ever, but you've got to murder, you got to secretly murder five people. Or you're going to be seen as the second best president ever, and you don't have to murder anybody. I think Donald Trump would not murder people. I've never heard him say the N-word. I've said the N-word six times to a guy named after a god who was so racist against black people and, and uh, uh, anti-Semitic. It's basically like anti-black, anti-Jew. And calling them, like not, I don't think he was calling Jews the N-word, but... He was just using it in a way, and I'm like, no, you're the... And I said the N-word. And I think I said, you're a white N-word. And I said, I think I am. Now, it doesn't mean anything, actually. It means things to people, and it hurts some of them. It really doesn't hurt white people. Like, the N-word... I mean, oh, bleeding fucking heart attack liberals, I'm sure, like... And even just regular people who are sympathetic and, and also maybe empathetic, they can feel sorry for someone and also feel something like what it would be like to go through that. Um, which is what, simp empathy? But simp empathy sounds like the empathy of a simp, but I mean, to some things I think you could be a simp. You could be a simp to the truth and freedom. You know what, I'm going to put the cover... Instead of this video for now, this one, which is overhead, 
my bed in my kitchen. Long story. I mean, I love it. Uh, disable video. Get rid of uh, video part. No, fuck. Why is that showing? Huh. Uh, share my screen. Share screen two. And it's just whatever. It's a low resolution. I'm going to do all six. Fuck it, motherfucker. I didn't realize, like, why not? Why not have everything on? Sometimes it can... Fuck. It, it can be hard to get started talking. And my friends are assholes in a way. Like John. John worked, did some work for... Obama. No Obama, no Obama, no Obama, no Obama. No, that's a joke. Like, I love... I'm, I'm abomination. I'm not abomination. So I'm, there's people who either think abomination, like... We're for this guy and what he said and, and at least tried to do and in some cases did. And a lot of the other people who don't like him probably fall over the edge of a slippery cliff and, and think he's a piece of shit. Like a piece of shit. That's not a piece of shit. I mean, he's in, he probably got an eighth of a billion dollars and that's not great. And I haven't heard him come up with an idea. Like a big idea because... If he spoke a big idea, he could go to Musk and be like, Musk, please, please, let us, let's see, Obama, Obama, Musk. we'll call it Obama, Musk. which would be like Frost Nixon. Okay, who's the third person? Me. So, Obama, Musk, and myself, you have a fucking president who can think and speak, like, in, very effectively. Uh, was a, is probably, or more so, was a constitutional scholar, a skilled writer, people love him, handsome guy, family man, like, great political candidate, like, just a crazy great political candidate. He didn't need John. Um, and I'm high as fuck right now. Um, so, oh, Obama, Musk has like 100 million followers. I don't understand why Musk didn't say, you know what, Twitter... Either give me a real good fucking deal, or I'm going to start another site, <coughs> excuse me, with my hundred million followers. And what, and what Musk would have found out instantly, not going to be that hard to spin up. You could come up with a, a decentralized system, find reputable, like, people in each city in the world to run a server. It's only tech, like, for, you could just say it's only text for now, link to YouTube videos, you can't post videos because we don't have... Can't build it fast enough, but we have a peer to pyramid where any message can spread out. You know, you have you have your ability. And this probably wouldn't even be that hard to do. You have your ability to send out a message to I I would say twelve people. You and tw those twelve people surrounding you, thirteen, uh, a baker's dozen. One one sixty nine is a baker's gross. One forty four is a regular gross. Oh. Um, 1,440 is the number of minutes in a day. 88% is the number of people that live in the Northern Hemisphere, which seems kind of crazy. The second name of my work for many years was Democracy with a Z. That's not the whole name. I mean, I'd say it was Democracy with a Z, bro. Like, democracy. Democracy. Now, my kids will troll me, or did used to troll me, and would say, you mean demo crazy? Like, they're... They're smart, love, lucky, pretty kids. I could be a much better father. I could, I could have done things with my kids over the last 10 years if I'd focused on myself and, and not, wasn't being the being I was made to be in some other alternative universe. We would have ridden horses. We would own a cockatoo. We'd have a robotic cockatoo that would talk to the other cockatoo, like literally the kids would just have a fucking headset on, and anytime they wanted, they'd press like one of their uh, controller rings. I mean, you can have them here, right? This is where you click. You gotta, so easy. Where's my, I, I, I almost thought about buying good headphones today. Temporarily, I can afford it, even though I'm like four grand in the hole. So you take something like this, I jack on, get more fucking high. Oh! <sighs> Make sure this fucking audio is recording. I'll freak the fuck out if it isn't. Go up and click on docs. Audio mixer, it's fine. Yeah, I feel like I'm yelling. So, what were you looking at? We're talking about some VR shit, right? Uh.
Oh, so first we were, I was actually just talking to the cockatoo. Or, I was saying if I was a good father, we would, have, we would ride horses. We'd probably own horses. I don't know if you can own life, but, I mean, hey. It's for horses. I make a lot of rhymes about horses and Porsches and divorces. And I say things like, may, may divorce be with you. I believe that we could write a book called many different things. We could call it uh, Camp Pain, Camp Space Pain, 42024 Ever Everyone. Campaign 42024 Everyone. Campaign 42024. That's 420, it's whatever. It's a weed number. I like the number 420. It's a, it's a good number. And I've smoked weed for more than half my life. So 420, just 420, 24 is a portmanteau of, of numbers, you know? 420 and 2024. Originally, it was 420, 20. Like, I'm 420, 20, but 2020, like, you know what the fuck happened in 2020? 2020, 2020 was not super fucking positive and co-optic and co-optimized. 2020 was a year where we at least inefficiently and stupidly figured out a lot more about how to protect ourselves in the case of another pandemic or something like, truly deadly. Like, not so deadly that people just died and spread the disease, right? But had a sufficient incubation time um, in conjunction with its rate of fatality. I mean, if something doesn't manifest for a month and it kills everyone, in, 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 in these days, if you don't have symptoms, if it doesn't pop up for a month and then you die in a day, like, everybody's dead. <coughs> so, we would have ridden horses, we'd have cockatoos, probably a robotic cockatoo, this, my microphone arm, and, and uh, this... The architectural drafting light from Office Max. They would be actuated. Each one would have an actuator. Like, you can have erectors. Like, we had erector sets back in the day, but I had... And you still buy erector sets. I think a modern version of an erector set with different metals... Um, different metals manufactured well. Combined with the idea of what I call a junk bed or a punk bed. A fiber punk or a fiber junk bed. And a fiber punk bed would be something like, listen, we're making this thing out of... Uh, Pieces which are, you know, maybe like iPhone cables or something, like a three-foot piece, probably a one-foot piece, probably a one-foot piece, two-foot piece, three-foot piece, four. Um, and then you could probably assemble, like if you had two, three-feet, a bunk bed, corner posts would be two three-foot pieces. There'd probably be another piece that would, you know, connector pieces, which would probably be magnetic, and you would just... Magnet would be in there, you put it in, it would pull, with the other one in there, it would pull, and unless you had a giant earthquake, it's not going to come out. You could, obviously, I think, lock it also if you wanted to. Um, bunk beds are a lot like scaffolding. We could make, easily make bunk beds where, well, a few things. One, so many products to make and sell, and, and, I, and I'm in a position when, we're in a position where we can do things to coalesce human intelligence, like take ideas and bring them in front of all of our people who are more curious, more intelligent, more unselfish people on average, like 100%. We can guarantee those things, that the people who are a part of our company, our company, not, not a boring company, extremely exciting company, uh, a cooperation, a cooperational, create-your-own-adventure uh, capital family business. They would be brighter, more curious, and more forgiving and less for taking. They would average in all those three columns, I think, sufficiently better than the average human. Y'all do respect. It's not your fault. Not their fault. Very deterministic. But understanding or at least believing that despite wanting to help people who've been hurt, if you're trying to create great examples that you think could propagate and spread throughout humanity and, and, and make life far greater, possibly voluntaristically over the next 10, 100,000, million, billion years, you might at some point need to gather together people in a community 
where people who've been, like, ruined human beings, and there's probably over a billion or two, I don't know, where, where, where you would draw the line at where a person, like, this is, this, this is, this person, at the very least, is not humane. Like, they're so fucked up by whatever the mainstream river of history manifests in their lives um, that I, I can't imagine... Like, if I walked around a beautiful future university that just said to humanity, like, we're going to show you the best that can be done if everyone is bright, at least bright enough to understand this, like, to, to get to, to at least take a test where you're in a game and you learn how to do the basics of, honestly, a thousand jobs. There might be a thousand quests, and you might have to actually put on a VR headset and grab a fucking wrench and do this and see it. Do- like, you might have to sh- un- show that you understand how to do everything on a basic level. Level and in a virtual reality, you can become an apprentice on a, on a basic level, such that in the real world, if you need to go work for someone who's a master, bad word. I mean, I I'm master Beethoven, but that's a joke. Although I'm also I'm roast master Beethoven, and I'm high, and I'm a fucking light another cigarette, and I'm gonna die from this shit if I'm not careful or, or and or lucky. Um, so, a person wanting to belong to the greatest, mo- most phenomenal, uh, richest cooperative in history would probably realize, like, fuck, in order, like, I can join this and be an E-Squire. You know, I'm Kafka Esquire. That's what I call myself. So many things I call myself. I have the best things that I call myself. Absolutely tremendous things that I call myself. A lot of them are, like, like pretty to pretty pretty to ridiculously applicable. Um. So, in the real world, you have a person who's who's really great at something that, that they have a master's, and and you're having a competition where they need to work with somebody else. First person is somebody who's learning from scratch, an intelligent human being with, with no knowledge of of what's happening. Um, and the other person who spent one hour inside of a brilliant VR simulation, um, which they have to pass, and which explains what at, what at that moment is determined to be the, the truly necessary information so that you can be of assistance to someone who, like, you can work with a person who is a, who does have a master's as an apprentice, who even, even with only an hour of knowledge. And you could say to people, like, listen, you want to be a knight, like in a nightclub, you want to be a good knight, a crypto knight? Like, to become a knight, you may have to put in a thousand hours. Or averages would take people a uh, thousand hours to learn all the shit. So, that they, so they could say it to the AI and, and, and get all of the thousand questions correct or whatever it is. It could be a very short process. It could be not, like, a, ver- a very few complicated ideas, deeper ideas, and then 2,000 other ideas that I've mind in 25 years out of my mind where every new idea is mine not having search so i mean it could turn out i could search every word that i made up that never saw or have no recollection of seeing and, and find out that they all exist and still bring them together in a way that creates a splash and an impact on the planet um which certainly could happen and it's far from delusional to believe that someone even a, a really high level sub genius could overachieve and tell compel and tell not compel um, to tell, I mean, it could almost compel people to, by the power of the narrative, narrative itself to open new pathways in their brain uh, of a type that might come from an optimist prime mind. Optimist prime, like optimistic. Like optimisticism, like co-optimisticism. Like eco-optimisticism. I think I missed a schism. Was it race schism, or was it race racist? Do I want to go back and erase this? You some kind of basic basis, and if you were, would you face it and would you say this? Um, fuck, another um, points. It could be curse jars. Like in a decentralized, cooperative, constitutional, create your own, choose your own, create your own constitutional system where you. A, probably have to demonstrate, like, an understanding of the entire core thousand occupations it takes to run this university. We'll say, we're building something out of fucking scratch. 
almost everything that will go on in the city has a very, very similar parallel in existing reality. Like, it's not like we're going to become like a, a thousand years in, in, in the future in terms of what plastic we might use to run hot water or to dig holes in the ground or to pour concrete or put up rebar, uh, work on and plant, like plow and, and, and sow and water and fucking fertilize and, and reap and deliver like crops from farmland. I believe that we would end up building in an extremely basic way Whatever we decided, like, whatever the land was for the world's first universe city. It might, it might very likely, like, when looked at from, from a balloon or space, have a hexagonal pattern. Like, a lot of animals, including humans, love hexagonals. Like, the hexa agony of certain manifestations of hexcentricity. So, it might be like you have... You look down, you're like, holy shit, there's a thousand acres down there, and there's like this spread out fucking city, and thousands and thousands of homes, and, and a thousand hexagonal spaces. I mean, fuck, when you, okay, when you're in, so I'm imagining this. This is how I see it. You, have a, you look down, you have a piece of land that is hexagonal. Now, the lines that make up the hexagon, those are the pathways on the ground through the hexcentricity. Each person, or where people would predominantly live, or maybe where all people would live, even though all spots might not be used for this, the po six points of, the, of each hexagon would be like a, a private property. But like the whole thing would be a city built by people together, like having made decisions long before it even fucking existed. We're starting to make decisions before it existed, and decisions which brought it into existence. They might, they might want to have a system where the city is, is the city that I, like, similar to what I, what I imagine, a place where, in order to keep out pieces of shit and takers, you, you almost you kind of raise the taxes in some way, so that only people who are like, holy fuck, like, if I give just half, if I give half, or if I give half, and it's spent well, then we'll just be sad that we're in America and that we have to pay taxes to an idiotic and inefficient system and probably do what a lot of companies do in America, which is just kind of shop what you'd have to publish very, very successfully. Part of that story might be like, we're, we don't know where we're building the world's first university. And in fact, it might be somewhere where some country gives us a piece of fucking land. I mean, it could be in the fucking Sahara. It's actually possible that the first com university or com university, it's not communism, but it might involve a com mutiny. And a, and a calm mutiny, ideally, right? We're kind of aiming for a calm mutiny. Like, like take, retaking over the ship from history. It's like a thousand-headed fucking weird-ass beast, which has produced lower overall poverty, poverty, but also concentrated insane amounts of money and power in the hands of people who, like... I mean, maybe had to end up in that place if shit is deterministic, if, if, if God, Uncle Sam Harris is right, like, they just, they had to fucking do it. I do like the scene in, in The Norseman, and many times I've seen the, the predeterminism refuting scene done when someone believes in it, and, like, someone else just does something fucked up, like, because in order to try to demonstrate that you can do anything if that's true. Like, if people take that to mean that you can do anything, then, I mean, that, they would need that knowledge to behave that way, and maybe it would have to be necessary that, that they came into the possession of that knowledge. It is entirely likely, or it's very, very likely, that however many basic fucking entities or particles there are, all of them that we will ever experience in any way, I mean... We could experience something on the other side of the Big Bang because it caused the Big Bang, right? Like, is there an equal, equal and opposite reaction in the case of a Big Bang? I mean, what, like, what is the action? The action is letting go. Because the action is letting go, and then the whole thing just flies away, like just a very gently, like just let go, and then 
it explodes and accelerates away. It is far more sensible to conceive of the of, of the Big Bang as God's suicide in a way. Like where God said, I'm going to I love if I love me, whatever the fuck I am, this this beach ball Yeah right, size of, of pure light. Like energy particles that even at even in heat death will l- live forever. Right? These are God particles. They're all God particles. If you believe in God, like, it, it, it's, I think it's only sensible to believe that this is all in some way, shape, or form the, the, the totality of the mind and body of God. You are made up of the mind and body of God. In a deterministic scenario, like, just think, like, who, like, what the fuck? Like, this is the universe, and 99 point, you know, 99 nines of the universe exists completely apart from you and you have no influence over it in any way. 99 and 99 nines, I think. You have that point, uh, nine, like point 99 zeros, one percent influence in the universe. Or it's some crazy number, really. Like how low that number is, like one over, I mean, one over eight billion if you just consider yourself like equal in a sense to all people, like in, in, in a sense of efficacy, like, one in eight billion, and that's just people. And one in eight billion will be like point zero 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 zero. That's only nine. Sorry. And each time it goes by a scale of ten, right? Like it's exponential. So, I mean, I think or is exponential just doubling? I don't even fucking. I'm Alex. Alex Ponent. Alex Ponens. That's his modus. He fucking spit this shit. He never wrote it. That shit so fucking wrote it never should have been written. This guy's trolling. This guy's a schizo. This guy's spitting. He spits so fine. I told you, show though. And I told you that I came up with all these ideas and rhymes out of my mind. Where every new idea is mine. It's like where every new idea we find. Where do we find every new idea? Out of our minds. If it's in your mind, it's not a find. And you can find ideas that other people have found. If they don't share them, you can do that. And if they share them, you're brought directly to them in a completely different way from if you find those ideas yourselves. It probably would be a good idea for us to, to, to kind of consciously, I mean, teach kids better, give them better opportunities to learn in better ways, but um, in part to experiment a little bit in, in different ways of not giving them too much information or kind of setting them up in a school which would not be able to happen with like totally age-based classes where they are presented with a lot of information and they themselves need to create the theory, right? Like they keep asking for hints and, and, and in the end it might be like, fuck, <laughs> I got every hint and it really was almost no leap at all for me to develop this theory without being told this theory. You go step by step, you can kind of lead them up and and... You'd at least find out in that case which kids just jumped, right? Like, which kids with a few pieces of information... That was a weird stutter. With a, with a few pieces of information, jump to that appropriate conclusion. I, I think of a few different demographics. Um, the most... I mean, in a lot of ways, I, I was born and made to be the opposite of a Nazi. Like, the opposite of a National Socialist, but... More so... This is like the opposite of that is what? It's nothing. Um, or maybe it's pure good. <laughs> but the opposite of a Nazi is in the opposite of someone who does not see, right? A person who does not see reality crystal clearly anymore. And I think the one thing that is most likely to cloud your vision and make it so that you, you do not see reality clearly is lies. Whether, it's, whether they're accidental or intentional, if, or like, like things that are told to you that are not right that are not true and then things that you do like you you start to say things that are not true like my own father a good dude worked hard better father than the vast majority of them and my mom too um a few years ago basically just made kind of a a, at least a pretty simple quick argument in favor of telling white lies 
or or being able to tell white lies or whatever. And and that's not the the, the fucked up part at all. The fucked up part is that he made that argument with not only without the expectation that I would have a good like a really good argument uh, in return, but like such a low expectation that I don't think he even seriously considered what the fuck I was saying. And probably at this point, if you ask him, um, I mean, he's like 80, so he's not, I mean, I'm, I'm 50 at this point. We get older. Um, why did I say it was 80? Like, that just jumped me off the track in the train. Fucking crashed. Sometimes it just happens like that. Oh, so the, the, he just made the same case that is really made by almost everyone, if they make the case at all, is that, like, it's, like, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, and that's why I would tell a white lie, like, that's why I would say something that's wrong. And there are at least a couple of different ways that you can, you can look at lies and see that, that they're bad, like... You can look and think like, shit, yeah, you're not hurting this woman's feelings by lying to her. That, like, that creates, I think, if it propagates, if that's a policy, a fake society. Like, don't have anybody who's completely real if everybody's lying. And not even lying all the time. But if you give yourself permission to lie, it's entirely possible that like, subconsciously those permissions are transferred. And when you're asleep, you can write to your own mind. If, you're, if, you've, if, if your mind has permissions to lie, you can write shit into your mind that isn't fucking true. Now, I don't know how exactly your mind keeps track of what it thinks is, is true and, and what shit isn't. But if it's writing to you, rewriting and, 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 and creating neural connections and, and there's lies in there, it's going to be completely fucking different from if that was not the case. I don't think... If you lie as a kid a few times, I, I, I'm sure they all do. Unless the first thing we ever taught children was like, we don't have any surveillance in this world. Like, we have almost no police. Like, we could be destroyed. And the one thing we rely on is teaching our children, like, be fucking truthful. One, be truthful. And two, all the world governments are run absolutely transparently. Like, every fucking dollar, every dollar, every cent, and all the cents that, like, connects in any way to any of these people who decided they would like the privilege of leading free people. Like, they do not ever... Like, basically, we'd say to those people, like, you do not fuck with money. You do not touch money. You do not own money. Like, the United States has you. You're running to be a public servant. Like, there are conditions that did not used to exist in the past, but we definitely... We have housing for every government worker, and it's decent. It's not going to be a fucking mansion, but, it, like... We might build in the next, you know, 10, 20, 5, 50, 100 years, America could, has to rebuild some shit. And, and, um, fuck, it's almost 4 o'clock. One of those things might be, like, really fucking awesome housing for people who work for the government. Like, there are benefits to this. It is extremely efficient. We have economies of scale. Like, when, when, when... This, when this super project buys fucking ketchup, it buys ketchup possibly through Amazon at like a 0.5% markup above Amazon. Like for them, it sort of increases the, their economies of scale. It makes them look much better to Americans. Um, but you could even say like, listen, the only way, if the government gives you housing, then, then unless you are disabled, unless you're like... If the government gives you universal basic sustenance and housing, like universal basic justice, universal basic humanity, then if you are capable, you do something to work for us. Whatever the fuck that is, like something for us. You spend, you invest time, say, at least 20 hours a week, a thousand hours a year, you are not working for yourself. Whatever the fuck you're doing, whether you're cleaning a sidewalk or building a thing or repairing a thing or interviewing people or, or, or editing or designing, whatever you're, you're doing for, for 
project in Numerica, or, you know, the reunited States of America. I mean, it, with the transparent futuristic system, you could see all of the things that really make up the government. The only real question would be, what if every other country can see where all of your military dollars go? Like, there's no truly economically covert possibility. I mean, I think with the amount of money we spend, it would scare the shit out of them even worse. They'd be like, holy fuck. And they know that, like, if there were a war and it was not nuclear. I mean, this is happening in the Ukraine in a way, right? One thing we get to do is send them a bunch of our slightly older weapons. Like, or, or more, or, like, older weapons. And, and some of the shit, we had, like, large stockpiles of artillery shells. And they wouldn't last forever. And, and in some cases, I think, I mean, we're probably making more shit now, but the things we're making are uh, uh, probably a, either a higher quality or a, or, or, or a more advanced version of the ordinance that might have been made 5, 10, 15 years ago. I don't know how long artillery shells last, but they definitely have shot a lot of them and they cost a lot of money. And somebody gets to make them. And usually there's profit off that. It's hard, like... America crushed it in World War II, I think partially because of, you know, profit. And the Nazis, so many stupid fucking crazy things, thank fucking God. And, like, being stupid and crazy in many ways still, like, a, a few go back in time and, and talk to Goering a little bit, and he believes you about the Battle of Britain, you probably can kill the fucking British Air Force and, and then just constantly loop... Like, if you kill the British Air Force, like, whatever the spacing is a mile between a plane, playing 400 planes, making the 400 miles to fucking France, like, wherever the fuck the Germans were closest, 400 planes going the other way, one plane every mile, constantly targeting whatever the fuck shot at the plane in front of you. Like, the plane goes, the plane gets shot at, it doesn't turn around, if, 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 what's in, if it gets shot at by something in front of it, it, it is designed to semi-dive, say a 45-degree angle dive at anything that's shooting at it. Um, and they were jets. I guess you could put a pusher propeller and, and put some kind of an insane air brake in front and just and then almost suicide whatever the fuck is shooting, whatever artillery piece. But, you know, you've had dreams when you're falling and you're on a rock and right before the rock hits the ground, you know, you jump like 250 miles an hour, you jump, and, and, and you just stop right on the ground. Rock, whatever the fuck happens, the rock goes into the earth. The earth is kind of soft at that point, I guess. It's a, a peat bog or something. In that case, you're not going to, like, you're going to sink in, too. I guess if you jump perfectly, you're still going to sink in. I mean, unless it's a tundra peat bog, which I think is a thing. What are we talking about? Oh, so you could be, you could be, I mean, I don't know about World War II. Yeah, in World War II, a, a person could be lying in the back of a, oh, fuck, not if, it, if it's a pusher prop, fuck. Okay, so here's how it goes. You have a regular front prop puller. The pilot is in the ass, like the, like the, 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 the tunnel that leads to the horizontal and vertical stabilizers is... Thick enough that a person can slide in there and and their feet have airline control, I think, in this case. Their feet are actually kind of closer to the back of the wings. They could just be like, they could literally move the airlines with their feet. And, I mean, in theory, the fucking rudder and elevator would be like right behind where their fucking head is. So if their arms were here, they could probably control the craft and they'd be laying backwards, and they'd probably just need a periscope, right? They'd have to see out the front. There could be, like, a really cool optic, Germans had great optics, running through the plane, no machine gun, just optics, felt like uh, periscope optics, periscoptics, and so the pilot could fly. The pilot would go in, and well, in, in that tunnel that he was in, there'd be, it would be, the back end of it would open, and at his feet would be, a, a, a rocket charge. So, as the guy goes into suicide, um, when the when the the baby radar on the plane de detects that it's like 
a hundred feet above the ground, then the rocket fires in the back of the plane, and, and the guy's head is at the back, and in a couple seconds, accelerates him, driving a neck brace, accelerates him out the back of the craft at a rate greater than the rate of the, the, the descent of the airplane, and, and, and kind of stops them. I mean, the problem is, what do you do if at 100 feet it fires, and at about 20 feet from the ground, you're shot out? Like, even if, even if you're shot out at an, at an exact canceling speed, you're going to be hanging 20 feet in the air. And there's, unless you have a rocket opening parachute, like, you're in fucking trouble. I mean, I believe that you could carry a slightly larger backpack. Like, parachuting backpack and have a compressed cylinder of some kind of, of fucking gas. I mean, you could probably have a, a, a compressed cylinder of gas that would also be heated and fucking released and kind of blast... To shoot up of course that would be pushing up and it would pull you down but it would definitely bite as fuck and and your speed would be drastically reduced quickly i mean look at a parachute when it fucking opens fully like you can glide quite a distance you're definitely not necessarily going down fast like you might be going kind of fast this way but and it's not a, a person with no training would probably land pretty fucked up if you just have the parachute and try to land. And again, releasing gas. I mean, the umbrella could, what, what the umbrella could, what the parachute could be is basically like a balloon where some of the lower panels of the balloon would blow out when it reached a certain pressure, right? So the balloon would blow up, and as the pressure continued, maybe four, maybe eight panels on the bottom that are weaker than the ones on the top would blow the fuck out. They could be made sparkly so that they would distract people shooting at you. But I guess if you win it, I don't know if you could do this all in World War II. So, you, so these guys would target whatever's shooting at them. The prop would blow off. Or the prop, the prop would be a 12-sided prop that could act as a speed break and a bullet blocker for the center tunnel of the plane. You'd target it, and as you, at 100 feet, you'd fire your rocket. There'd be a spring first. The spring would release, and then a rocket. You'd, and a strong spring could, could get you started out the back of the plane pretty quickly. Um, I mean, the military is pretty powerful. You could cock that bitch with very strong on the tarmac and the hangar equipment on the tarmac. Um, probably on the plane. I mean, you get a lot of this in a plane, you can certainly charge up that spring. Now, that spring, I mean, if you have a strong enough spring, and you're falling in a free fall, it, certainly it could push you up some, and I mean, I don't know if you could make a spring strong enough, and, and, and realistically, where you could stand inside of a rocket that was falling, like inside of a tube that looked like a rocket that's falling straight down, and... You're standing inside of it, and it's in a free fall. It's going 200 plus miles per hour, and you release a spring that accelerates you right, like just in time, so that before the rocket hits the ground, like your speed is canceled. Like accelerates you up to 200 miles an hour as you're going down 200 miles an hour, and actually fucking stop you on the ground. Now there's going to be the wreckage of something that's just hit into the fucking ground. So, um, that's not great. I mean, maybe the rocket could be designed, the thing that you're falling in could be designed so that when it crashes, like maybe it's a tightly woven thing, an integrated system, but when it crashes, integration blows up, like breaks away, and the whole thing kind of inflates, right? You could have something that in its operational form was very strong, but was composed of interwoven components that in, in a destructive case could be sort of inflated, like the thing would want to blow up and become thicker. But it would be kind of like twisted down. You could have like a rocket, right? It was twisted like a Chinese rocket torture. And then if it goes this way, it's kind of softer and safer. And this way, it's longer and, and, and more aerodynamically efficient. Same thing applies for uh, the fencing club, which is a kind of awesome toy sword. It can become long and thin and hard or 
shorter and fatter and softer. Same thing as the, the, the twist dick, or the, or the adjust dick, which is a Chinese finger torture dick. And then you've got adjustable width, different tips that you can put on. Regular computers, TVs, phones, and, and beautiful VR shit showing you how to fucking do it. And you should be able to put your VR headset on and look at your table and see all the parts you have for this product and, and get a, a, an AR overlay, overlay, and, and know exactly what you need to get. See a little framed window here. A person can pop up, show you how to do it. You can learn how to do many, many basic things very quickly. You can see things in, in, well, in video, but more so in, in, in immersive virtual reality with, mixed in with video reality that are, I think, a thousand times cheaper than what it would cost to do them in reality. And if you want to build great ideas, you're going to have to iterate. You're going to have to go through a lot of ideas. A lot are going to fail. Science of different kinds is going to prove that some of these ideas are not hyper-efficacious and, and you need to get rid of them. And that process, if you're trying to build real communities in the real world, which can cost billions to, to, to start even a smaller a, a smaller city, I mean, you don't want to start at fucking ground zero, right? You don't want to start with a giant pile of destroyed buildings and, and humanity. Like, you want to start, I mean, that was a bit of a jump, but when I said ground zero, that's what I thought of. I mean, you don't want to start with, without human intelligence, on, on the, the network virtual side. Like you can see pretty much exactly what a building looks like that you're gonna build. You can see the circuit boxes that are, are, are in the immersive space, the same circuit boxes which come out of an engineer's design program and integrate with the other electrical systems which come from other engineers' design system and the, the, the city simula- <coughs> Excuse me. The a simulator, I think, would allow you to create uh, a city operating system in a virtual space, which would bring data that was extremely parable to the data of the real world, real world, how things are done in the real world, and only apply some algorithms and multipliers in cases where we might not be doing anything different, like mechanically or technologically. We might just say, well, you know, in, in, in a million person northeastern city, 100,000 people own shitty snowblowers, and we would rather in a, in a million uh, person city that there were possibly, say, a thousand. They had a million thousand, no, wait, 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 a hundred thousand thousand dollar snowblower, or they had a hundred million snowblowers. Let's say they had 50 million in snowblowers, and they're all kind of shitty. We might say, well, part of this because there's new technology and we're building from scratch, but Instead of having 100,000 people each owning a $500 snowblower and the rest of the people not having one at all, either having to shovel or pay some commercial service, like prices that really vary in their effectiveness and in their efficiency depending on how much it snows that winter and depending on the kind of contract that you have you know, with that person. We might say for a million people, instead of getting a hundred thousand, fifty thousand dollar snowblowers, I mean, we could just say we're getting, uh, wait, sorry, a hundred thousand, five hundred dollar snowblowers, you might say we're getting five hundred, one hundred thousand dollar snowblowers. Now, that would be one per two thousand people, and it's not going to be super easy to plow their driveways. And someone would say, we're not going to have driveways anyways, right? Like, I call the, the garage apartments, kind of like where, where, where the footprint of where these products go, super garages. And it's kind of a, an ironic name because they're kind of designed for a place where people do not put cars in, the, in their garages anymore. It's not that 
in some cases, a city might not be built that has 10,000 people and 2,500 awesome four-seat electric vehicles because part of the Constitution says you have to have enough seats if there's no airplanes. You have to have enough seats for every fucking human being in the community to exodus very quickly if necessary. So for 10,000 people, you don't need 10,000 cars. In the real world, you might have 5,000. You need 2,500. And also, they, don't, they wouldn't have to be like a bunch of Honda, Honda Accords. You could have some large buses and then some motorcycles and airplanes and boats. All that kind of shit. Like, if the government does it, I mean, they do it in the military, right? But it costs a shit of money, like boats and planes. All that shit can be done far more efficiently and safely by something you know, similar to business and even drastically more so if you don't just rely on extracted profits by a business that manages to sell itself as a, a brilliant investment for people who want whatever the fuck it's going to provide and say, we, we must get our money from ourselves or this will be built to extract money from us. One of the things we might do is like, listen, we are minimizing the number of vehicle seats what's necessary for an exodus and we're ending up with like super garages like garages like which have tremendous modern like something partially robotic like brilliant maintenance and and and, and repair and storage and charging facilities then no one needs to have a fucking garage like within a few years you can just call call a tesla if that's what you're gonna do we might say in our actual universe cities there are no fucking cars we have what are called sidewalks that travel along the borders of these hexagons I was talking about. Sidewalk would probably be an inductive, possibly inductive and grass-covered sidewalk. I mean, they might even be such that large, like, they could be a combination of real grass and, like, inductive grass. They might just be fake grass. They might be, like, electrofficial turf. But, I mean, low-voltage, safe, distances are short enough that DC works fine. I mean, Edison was obviously, in some way, negatively out of his mind trying to push something he just knew had so many uh, deficits. And instead of looking at that, just looking at the, the deadliness of AC when used correctly. It might really be such that in a city there are no direct lines. Um, there are no avenues where you, like, maybe there would be. But, like, generally it would be a, a possibly a hexagonal system where... where if you were actually moving through the city on foot, um, you would continuously kind of turn. Now, I think that instead of being hard hexagons, right, if, if in these outlines, remember, it's a hexagon with a property in the middle that it lo most locally administered by the six people who live at the points of the hexagon. Now, each of those people would also be at the points of two other hexagons, so every person would be a part of three different six-person communities. Now, there'd be it would be 18, except um, it's 5, 5, and 5, because you're 5, 5, 5, and 1, so 16. Because you're three different people in that community, but one of the communities would be you and the six people kind of away from you that surround a hexagon. That would be one level of, of, of governance visualization. The other one would be the most local would probably be well, probably you. It'd be a mix. It'd be you and and two, three other people that you were directly connected to. It was the point of every hexagon in a tessellated system? The others. Oh wait. Yeah, of course. It couldn't be two. Line. Um. So you'd have that connection to those two other people directly via, like, pathways in the community. Now, understand, in a community like this, sidewalks allow us to move, like, pretty fucking heavy things, inductively, essentially autonomously. Some of them would float. A lot of them would have kind of soft, soft wheels. Like, probably really soft wheels, actually, so they could, like, run over a kid. Even something that weighed many tons would probably straddle the walkway and get its power from the walkway, from the sidewalk, <coughs> and might even lift itself a bit, like, uh, superconductively or something, but it might roll. If something was heavy enough, it would probably roll. Many of the things, in fact, would probably roll and, and 
that power through their fucking wheel. Pathways, like you kind of look at a train system where when you drive, you go through the city, like there'd be a lot of turns, but they would be curved enough. It wouldn't be like a, a third, what is it, a 60 degree angle? Um, 120 degree angle, I guess. Where's it going? You're going straight. Hey, you're turning off 120 degrees. No, wait, 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 wait. No, it's 120 degrees in front of you. You're turning off 60 degrees. I'm not sure. But in, in, a, in a situation like this, we'd probably have lots of like little electric short, range, short ranges and zeppelins. Probably not helicopters. Probably not hard drones. In, in, in a great system, there would be various different sizes of, of essentially low altitude, like hydrogen, a combination of hydrogen and hot air. Maybe like a combination of hydrogen and nitrogen. I don't know how light nitrogen is. None of it, though. Um... Helium is, is, we're not going to have fusion reactors because we're going to run out. I mean, we may have fusion reactors producing helium. We may filter all the water in the ocean in like a giant fucking aquatic solar plant in the desert. Like, that could definitely happen. And doing that, we might find all the tritium. Tritium is necessary. We might pull out those microscopic, nanoscopic quantities, but from a trillion, a trillion, trillion gallons of water, whatever the fuck's on the planet, it's a lot. Um, so helium would probably be out of the question. If you're, if you're flying at low altitude and the craft is designed right, I believe that a hydrogen-filled craft, if it's sparked, um, would, would, I think, be designed so that the hydrogen, that the vehicle would break at the top. And the hydrogen would, would, would form a ball of flame. Um, and then the, the bottom, maybe the structural rigidity of one of these would come from half of the flying saucer would be like carbon fiber. Bottom half would be carbon fiber and the top half would be like balloon. The bottom half could be carbon fiber with spacing, right? Like a, a loose weave of carbon fiber or, or something with a very... Thin, uh, have to be hydrogen resistant plastic inside of it. Strength would come from the combination of the very thin film and the net of uh, composite reinforcement. I think you could probably build you build a balloon with just, I'm sure, the kind of are in a way nets where you have a fabric with different layers of fabric, one of which is gas containing, which is structural. If, I mean, you can make, you certainly can make a hot air flying saucer. I mean, you can, okay, you can make a, you can make a, a hot air flying saucer diameter of, I mean, a fucking city block if you want. Say, I mean, to be a hot air flying saucer, like, say 250 feet in diameter and 100 20 feet high. That's a tremendous amount of hot air that's going to lift a, a thousands of pounds. Now, if you suspend uh, a very efficient jet engine in, maybe not in the center, maybe one third of the way in, and such that it, that it can rotate, you could, you could create a, a tremendous amount of air velocity and heat at the same time. And in a symmetrical flying saucer, there, there could be a system where that everything, everything connected to that jet is mounted to a ring. Like, the ring would exist 
and hold the giant EVs to move the, the, the balloonish aspects, the top and bottom, whatever they are, and you just have like a, a, a ring on the ground with a fucking jet in the middle. You probably need eight really strong cables to connect this thing. But jet could produce thrust and a lot of heat. The heat could be largely capped, right? Like, it could be a relative... What do you do if it's relatively high pressure? If you increase the pressure too much, um, I mean, what happens when you, when you fill something with air that's getting fucking hotter? It's going to expand, or you increase the pressure by more of it and by the heat. So we would say, well, what happens is that we... And you need a tunnel right to the fucking engine. It's kind of crazy. You're not going to suck air from inside. Like, the, lead, the point where this craft would go would be determined kind of by a compass needle inside of it holding the jet. And the jet would be able to rotate in the air based in that, in that most structural ring of the whole fucking thing. Other than that ring, a lot of it might be 1030, which is air pressure enabled ribs and shit. I gotta go to bed. Eight early. So you can put a jet in the middle. I'm not saying you're gonna go hundreds of miles an hour, but you could have a 250 foot diameter, 120 foot tall, gorgeous flying saucer. I mean, you can't build that shape. Like, not a terrible shape. I mean, the Hindenburg, not a terrible shape either. Um, but I don't think there's anything terribly unaerodynamic about uh, a saucer. I do think that with a saucer that's not completely symmetrical, especially vis-a-vis -vis the shapes of the top and the bottom, you could make them so that if they were not moving at all, they would sink. Like, they just sink. And, 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 and maybe even sink fast enough that, like, if, they, if, they, if it sunk on top of the Washington Monument, it would penetrate the bottom and probably rip through the whole thing. We need Washington Monument deflectors in a situation like this. But wh where it would hit in the ground and it would pop. And the people that were in it, if they were in it, would be, I don't know, maybe they'd be on top. And a lot of the force would be absorbed by the impact and the popping. I'm not saying they would fall like a rock, right? I think they'd fall fast enough so that when they hit the ground, like, they'd be destroyed. But as the hot air escaped... A tremendous amount of force would be absorbed. And they, even if they're going 20 miles an hour, it's like you're in a car, a modern car, and you hit something, you hit something like a wall 20 miles an hour. If you're like, you can easily completely survive that. And people would probably be strapped into Zeppelins that weren't, you know, fully reliable at that point. So you could bring in the hot air, you could run it through the jet. A jet produces a lot of fucking heat, which could be captured through exchangers, which were part of the, the rearward frame. And I mean, ideally, you'd literally just have a tube in the middle that turned. And, and when, the, when, the craft, when the craft would be going this way, if the jet turns, like, it turns off and turns on a ring, and it, starts to, it would pull it this way. So it would, like, could build a system with a rotating turbine in the center. Um, and which heated the living shit out of the envelope. And even one, what we say, this thing is, it gets to pretty decent pressure, right? Like, when it's just sitting here, just running, and it's just heating the thing up at, 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 at a decent rate, right? It gets, the air gets hot. Not so hot that... That it pops. Not so hard, hot that it melts the fucking envelope. But you could probably... Okay, so at normal, at, in normal resting conditions, like crash conditions, if you're up there, it means that the air is hot, right? It is a hot air saucer. That's the largest component of its lift is the fact that it's a hot air saucer.
So with the the jet engine running at just just the speed necessary to heat it, but, and, and that heat could probably could probably charge like that heat could possibly be partially generated like from that jet. I mean, you could just have the jet running a generator and a heat exchanging generator, and then venting a large amount of its thrust out the back of the thrust, the rotating thrust axis. But maybe taking 25% of that power, like running a turboprop, like a, like a turbogen, and then maybe having, maybe having thrust fans. Um, I mean, you, you would need auxiliary power, whatever. So, this thing could be such that when you got it up to speed, the pressure inside, as you start to accelerate, you increase the pressure inside. As you increase the pressure inside, I mean, this would be if you weren't direct venting the thrust, right? Like, you'd be like, you'd, you'd need a, a vectoring system. But if you directed a bunch of the heat inside, it would get fucking hot. You'd increase the pressure. And in a sense, then, you can sort of open any one of 12 symmetrical vents on the jet and, and oppositional from when the jet was bringing in fresh air, a vent would open that would, or two vents would open or three vents would open that would cause that hot air to blow out the fucking back. And the jet would be sucking in a shit ton of air and filling the envelope, and in order that that envelope does not explode those vents would have to open. Now, if the, if the jet shut off, those vents would fucking close. It would still be hot, but when the jet shut off, the vents would fucking close, and you'd have a hot air balloon hanging there at lower pressure. Still enough pressure to hold its shape. Um but in a far softer way. And being hot, that heat would dissipate. The craft would probably start to descend straight down, well, down immediately once the jet would shut off. Um, it would probably not be lighter than air. It probably wouldn't fly away on its own. You'd need to fire up the fucking engine and heat the air. And part of it could just be, you know, you have maybe part of, like, there's a, maybe there's a donut I can see building a donut of, of hydrogen inside of uh, certain craft, like dronuts, which is a drone, typically a glazed donut, a prop in the middle that can rotate. But um, good if you put the hydrogen, or even, uh, say you put hydrogen in a donut, a donut's going to have to be, uh, I don't know, the hydrogen's risky. Put hydrogen in the donut, and in the center of the donut, you could have uh, a spherical hot air balloon. And if you filled up that balloon, cold air, like suck it from the ambient air, um, you'll, you'll sink. Fill that, you know, in the middle of a donut could be 25% maybe of the volume. Fill that with hot air and create a situation when you, you're, you're more buoyant. Without hot air, sink to the ground. Turn on the heat source. In, it, via some me mechanism, hopefully also a propulsion source. And... I mean, this is the thing. There's a, there's, there's, there's a design where... They have airships, I think they've worked on, that have, like, airfoil shape, sort of. Design where it, it, the craft like, can fly forward... And, and generate lift, and possibly even contract itself like a old school popcorn thing, like contracting. I think something like that is possible. That using aerodynamic forces and and pressure, that a craft could be made that kind of like a puffer fish, and as it started to accelerate, and probably a twisting finger torture style thing here too, probably where it came from, like where it could. 
twist and become like long and thin. And twist this way and become larger or shorter and fatter. Um I can I change the volume? I mean, if you twist the thing all the way, there's like no space inside, right? So I think, yeah, opening up like this. But what is the volume change in like Chinese fingers? I do think, obviously, having something like this flying through the air, even though a water drop is kind of like this, is probably maybe not going to be as good as something like this. I think a snake versus a fucking water droplet, the water droplet's going to crush it. A, a, a zeppelin that flies. Or a balloon that flies like a water droplet is also like completely feasible. I mean, you could make them so that they can fly. Maybe a modified water droplet, like with a bit of an airfoil shape combined with a water droplet. You could make them so they could fly when they turn on their thrust. They have enough lift. They fly long distances. If they run out of power, they they uh, go down and can't get up by themselves. You could make other versions. You could make one where like to launch, they're actually lifted up. Another thing like. Uh, some kind of copter maybe or a drone that can dock on top and help take the thing off i mean to fly, maybe you're flying from sydney to fucking new york you probably want something to get up itself um but the idea of possibly having a zeppelin that is in the shape of a water droplet I mean, it has a huge frontal area, right? But it also shunts that water. I mean, water droplets form. Maybe it's not the perfect formation in result to aerodynamic forces versus something that's not a liquid, but it's a very, I believe, a, a highly aqua-dynamic shape is probably a, a highly aerodynamic shape for the, for the most part. Something like that would be kind of weird. You'd think if it, I mean, it's kind of the shape of a hot air balloon almost, but what if you had a hot air balloon? This word doesn't work, right? So you have a hot air balloon, you put a jet where the basket is. Now you're going to pull it in the wrong fucking direction. Like, that's the problem with that. You could put a jet there if you were really using its thrust in a strange way. I, I guess, fuck, I guess the balloon would be sitting there, the jet would be hanging from the bottom. The jet would be pushing down. The jet would probably be pushing mostly down, but then... You know, would probably have like brakes on a, on a fighter jet or something. It would have thrust reversers that would that would push a portion of that heat into the fucking like giant water drop shape balloon, heating it up. I mean, you have a thing that kind of like that that flamethrower thing, right? It's just to it's just to heat it up, so. In theory, you fire the jet correctly, reverse 10% of the thrust or whatever to, to heat up your balloon, and then as it starts to get lighter, then the thrust of the jet itself pointing down can lift its own weight. Like it's basically hanging from the balloon. And without its own thrust, it would go down, it would pull the balloon down to the fucking ground, right? If, if the jet fucked up, you could cut the jet off. And the jet would probably have some kind of a auto-rotation system or something, some, some kind of one-time use, like retrograding mechanism in case it had to be cut off so it didn't just like land in somebody's house. But the jet could point straight down and, and be ducted such that it would lift its own weight, and that being a large portion of the weight, and the, and the jet could be connected to the systems that hold fuel, where you have quite a significant lifting force above, but a force insufficient to lift with an attached jet that's not on. Turn on the jet, and try how you'd inflate the balloon. The balloon starts to pull, right? It would pull at the jet. It would have no chance of lifting the jet completely up into the air, none, couldn't fly away, but the jet would certainly probably be stabilized by its mounting at the bottom of this uh, teardrop, I guess, well, teardrop is, I guess if it falls out of your eye, it's just a water drop, but I don't even think it has a time to form 
speed up enough to achieve like any kind of terminal shape. So the, the jet would fire, the balloon would inflate, get hot, it would start to pull, the jet would basically be standing there underneath it, firing thrust into the ground. You turn the jet up, turn off the thrust reversers, you tap just enough to keep the balloon hot. And the thing could go up like thousands and thousands of feet. Most of the balloon by itself, again, capable of lifting itself too high. The balloon itself might just be a balloon. There might be three parts. The jet, passenger compartment, and then the balloon. Passenger compartment could actually be at the top of the balloon, so it, it gets kind of weird. What you would need, I think, in the, in, in the front of the balloon would be a hole. In, in like a... a Say the diameter of this same water drop shaped flying craft is 150 feet. Maybe in the center of it, there'd have to be like a, a composite intake tube. Kind of like a funnel, maybe a, basically a funnel uh, with the ability to retain its shape while pulling in whatever the appropriate number of air molecules are. Now, you change the aerodynamics of a water drop if you open a hole in the front, you do. But if you bring in air at, at, at whatever the ideal rate would be, I think you, you can be extraordinarily aerodynamically efficient and, and bring a lot of the air that you're running into through your craft and, and to a jet. Now. Be kind of weird. You're hanging here. You got this big balloon, and you got the jet, and the balloon can lift. The jet is down here pushing down. Now, in this case, remember, you got this big balloon, and the center of the balloon is a funnel that's sucking air from above. I mean, you could probably accelerate it to a decent speed, um, and then turn it, and the balloon would still be it'd be it would be a teardrop, and a teardrop would fall down. But with, with a slight airfoil modification, I think, a modified teardrop, the jet would be lifting its own weight. There would be pull from the front, and it could probably go level. Again, the shape would probably have to cause air to ride over the top. The other crazy version is that of building something bigger than the Hindenburg, which looks exactly like an Orca, has a tunnel for thrust. Like, most of its structure is the thrust tunnel, the thing that holds the jet and the fuel, the, and where the thrust from that jet would be shunted through all of the fins. And these fins would only be fully rigid when the jet was on and sending variable amounts of fucking hot air through this vent system. And the vent system might be semi-inflatable, like it might, like, it would be basically like the back of, and I think there'd be like kind of a, a hole in the very back of the Orca too, but you make something like that and you can direct thrust through the fins, you can create a highly aerobatic, I mean, we could build a highly aerobatic non hydrogen Zeppelin that could swallow the Hindenburg. And, and steal all of its gas and shit it out. I gotta, I gotta go to fucking bed.